Hey everybody, how's it going today? I hope everybody's having a wonderful day today. Today I want to talk about should Christians play with Ouija boards? Should Christians play with Ouija boards? Now I'm going to take my time here and allow God to give me the word say in this video to edify the body of Christ as much as I can. And, I'll, and always remember too, it's not what we know that hurt us. It's what we don't know that hurt us, okay? Things we get off into without spirit of discernment can lead you on a bad path if you're not careful, okay? Now, let me just say, first of all, yes, it's wrong for Christians to play with Ouija boards. Now, see, my friend from high school, you know, his uh, mom and dad, you know, were Christians, right? They both uh, loved the Lord. But anyhow, his mom passed away for, you know, and there was somebody he knew that had a Ouija board, and uh, he was asking the uh, person to ask the Ouija board, uh, hey, how's my mom doing? Is my mom okay? Or, you know, thinking that really they're talking to her in the afterlife, but really they're not. But anyway, you know, that person, you know, said that, you know, that was playing with the Ouija board that was doing, a, you know, reading of the Ouija board. But like I say, I don't want to be in a room of one, okay, to find out, okay? That's just hearsay. But I take every word at value here. But anyhow, you know, that person that was giving them the reading said that your mom is okay. She's all right. She said, hey, and different things like that. But see, see what my friend don't realize is, okay, his parents raised him up in church, okay, in the church building. And he should already know without a shadow of a doubt that his mom is in heaven with the Lord, okay? Because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, okay? Now, what if that person that was doing the Ouija board reading was wrong? What if? You see what I mean? What if? What if, they, what if that person would have said that, okay, your mom is not okay, she's a torment, she's a turmoil, how do you think that would have made my friend feel? Not good. In fact, the most more likely would have devastated him, right? You get where I come from. See, that's the bad thing about playing with these so-called Ouija boards, okay? That's the reason why you shouldn't be asking questions to these Ouija boards, you know, about your loved ones that have passed on, you know, like, hey, is my family member okay that's passed on? You know, do you hear from them? You're playing with psychic mediums is what you're doing when you play with those kind of things. You're playing with psychic mediums is what you're doing. Set aside my friend Danny, you know, that passed away in a car incident, you know, in, in a head-on collision. You know, he was my age, but anyway, you know, he was telling about his Ouija board story to how he came across a Ouija board. You know, see, that's one thing about it. You know, when you hear people say bad things about Ouija boards, you know, dang good well not to mess with them dead burn things. You get where I come from, you know, to stay the heck away from them things. <laughs> kind of like a restaurant that's always getting a um, F review. It's always bad. It's always got roaches and stuff. You know, darn good well not to go eat at that restaurant, right? But anyhow, you know, he would say that, you know, most people try to get rid of a Ouija board. You know, sometimes they'll just, you know, appear back into uh, the house or sometimes it'll be like a red glow underneath the bed. You know, one door unlocking after another, locks unlocking and pictures uh, moving around and everything else. I don't know about you, but I'll be gone out here. <laughs> I would be staying my, you know what, there. You get where I come from. <laughs> I'd be praise God. I'd be mean, like I say, I, I would won't be sticking around in that room. I guarantee you that. If I see these pitch strayer move, I buy and rebuke of that. You get where I come from. But that's what I have heard. It's all me. See, that's the thing. When you play with Ouija boards, I mean, you don't know what kind of spirit you're playing with. You're messing with the familiar spirits, the demonic entities. I hope I'm saying it right, entities. Yeah, demonic entities. If I say that wrong, please uh, correct me in the comment section, okay? But I'm still learning. But anyway, see, you don't know what kind of spirit you're messing with when you're playing with a Ouija board, okay? Set aside, you know, people that do hypnotisms and stuff on people trying to, 
You know, like some people's got a mental problem. Now let me I'll take it over there right quick. You know, like some people that's got a mental problem. Say like my friend, he uh, has a kind of mental disability. But, you know, they would do hypnotized, hypnosis on him. You know, where they'd be like, say, you're, you're doing this, you're doing that, we're going to hypnotize you. Hypnosis is what that is. But anyway... You know when when you um, know what know what those days are about, you know to stay away from those things. But anyhow, to make a long story short, but I mean I could make this video more longer, but I just want to make a point straight to the point. Okay, now you know I was walking around the old and around the uh, abandoned part of a hospital one time. You know back when I first met my friend. Um, you know. He was telling me years before that that old abandoned part of the hospital was um, a hypnosis system, a mental hospital place. And I used to get the Jeep of Willies each time I ever went down there because I, you know, like when, when, when I was visiting some people, family members in the hospital, you know, one part of the hospital, everything's still running right, you know, but the other parts, it's abandoned. It used to be a mental facility or something but anyhow you know i would just you know just walk around the hospital just be curious you know what i'm saying you know just walk those long hallways <laughs> but anyway you know uh, this came came before that's two double doors that um you had to buzz in or get in the door right but anyhow you know, when somebody started talking on speakers, I mean, that near about brought me to my knees there. But I was like, it felt so creeped out. You know what I'm saying? It felt so freaked out. Because, I mean, I didn't know what was in there. I didn't know what, what that place was about. I was ready to get up out of there. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, you know, over time, I just kept, uh, you know, just going back around there each time, you know, you know, it's busy, somebody in the hospital or whatever. But anyhow, you know, you know, there was a room right here, and there was another room right here, and there was like a window in the middle of the room. I don't, I mean, I was a young teenager back right then. I didn't know any better, but anyway, <laughs> I would go in one, this room over here first, and I'll say, hey, what can I see you for today? Oh, then I'll just uh, go on over here to this other room and say, hey, I, I've been seeing things, and I get up and go back to the other, other room and look in the mirror, but I, you're seeing things, and I get up. Go back around and go back into another room. Yeah, I see stuff all the time. I've been, some people be talking to me. You know, when I was telling my friend Danny that before he passed away, he was like, man, if somebody was actually there and seen you, you would have been admitted real quick, even though you were just joking around, clowning around. And so, I mean, because there's no hypnotisms in there, you know what I'm saying? And it was a mental hospital. See, stuff like that, yeah, I mean, you do need to be careful with that kind of stuff because, you know, like I said earlier at this video, I hope pray this uh, makes sense as possible, but um, it's not what we know that hurts, it's what we don't know that hurts. Now, let me uh, scroll over here to the uh, tarot card reader right quick also. You know, this, those card readers, uh, Christians should be, um, you know, messing with those card readers either because, like I say, because they're trying to tell you the future. They're trying to guess at your future. They're trying to guess what your life is like. They're trying to guess what you're going to experience. It's a guessing game. That's basically what it is. It's a guessing game. I mean, you just pay them a couple hundred dollars so some people get it free. Now, let's uh, talk about this, though. On TikTok, or if you just scroll through YouTube Reels, but I, mean, I noticed mainly on TikTok, for example, you can't control what you scroll past, okay? And it's, and it's very easy to come across a tarot card reader, okay? They could be like telling you the future. They could be like telling you, okay, who's going to betray you today? You know what I'm saying? I mean, you're better off just go ahead and block that person I ain't play with it, okay? Because like I can say, that's what they do. And it's very easy to cross paths with those type of people. So I mean, see, you don't need somebody on TikTok, you know, telling you, hey, somebody's going to betray you today. Hey, somebody loves you. You know what I'm saying? 
I mean, it's nothing wrong with somebody saying somebody loves you and appreciates you, but you don't need a tarot card reader to say that. I mean, an ordinary person could say that. You saw what I mean, if you get where I come from. Because when you're uh, playing with these, you know, Ouija boards and you play with the card readers, I mean, you don't know what kind of spirit you're really messing with, though. You really don't know what kind of spirit you're really contacting. Now, let me just say this, too. Most of the time, when somebody passes away, that they, they, they're talking to the loved one that has passed away, you really don't know that you're really talking to a familiar spirit, okay? Because, sit aside me, the people I love that has passed on, most of the people I love that passed on, you know, my family and friends, most of them, they're in heaven, right? I mean, <laughs> what good is it going to do for me to talk to one of them when, when they can't hear me? You see what I mean? What good is it going to do? I mean, they can't hear me. <laughs> You're uh, talking to a familiar spirit when you do that kind of stuff. You've got to be very careful with that. See, let me just say this. I know this is a sensitive part of the video. I know that. Now, let me just say this. You have to be careful because Satan is the angel of light, okay? He can disguise himself as your loved one, okay? And deceive you real easily. You got to be very mindful of that, okay? You have to be. Because Satan will take the lowest moments you are in that life to deceive you in any way he can, okay? You're feeling lonely, right? That's the time Satan's going to try to use what he can to make you fall that much more. You get where I come from? So it's like me, I love, I miss my loved ones. I mean, I miss my best friend that passed on. But I know it's in heaven. I mean, I can't stand here, but I talk to my best friend that passed away because I know he ain't going to hear me. You saw me, you know, just sitting around, just having conversations like, hey, Danny, you remember this time back in the day? You remember this? You remember that? You remember this? So I mean, see, the only thing left for me to do it's just cherish that six-year friendship. You get where I come from. Because most friends don't last that long. You get where I come from. Because all it takes one little small disagreement or a little small screw-up and the friendship's over. Yes, I had plenty of screw-ups in that friendship, but me and Danny loved each other as brothers of Christ to make things work to work things out. But most people, these days, you just get a little bit of aggravated with somebody, friendship's over. That's what I mean. See, if I didn't know any better, yeah, I'd be talking to Danny. You saw what I mean? If I didn't know any better, I'd be talking to him right now if I didn't know any better. <laughs> you get where I'm coming from. It starts with that guy here before it does you. <laughs> I mean, I got to put that shoe on sometimes and wear it myself. <clears throat> but like I say, yeah, my loved ones are in heaven, and I praise God for it. I, I praise God for the ones I still have around. My family, friends are still here, though, but like I say, see, that's the thing. When, you know, say can use grief, the lowest moments of your life, when somebody's passed on that was real dear to your heart and soul and mind, to deceive you. You have to be very mindful of that, okay? Whereas why I'm saying this, because... Most of the time, oftentimes, like I said at the beginning, like my friend from high school, when the loved one passed away, they turned to a Ouija board for an answer. When their loved one passed away, they turned to a psychic reader or they turned to a tarot card reader for answers. You get where I come from? Or like some people would be like, Hey, my loved one is uh, visiting me tonight. My loved one's in the house tonight. You know, somebody just walking through the house and, you know, somebody turned the radio on their favorite radio station. Somebody turned their TV on. Somebody turned their lamp on. I mean, somebody was making a cup of coffee and that was my loved one. I just let them in. You might want to uh, check on that, okay? I, I, I guarantee you, you might want to check on that, okay? Because that's not your loved one. That's a familiar spirit, okay? See, this is something that most churches, not saying all of them, 
But most churches don't address these type of subjects. Most of them don't. I'm thankful that I had a pastor that addressed that because it said one time, it said several times over the years. When your love will pass away, it's fine to remember them, but don't start talking to them though, if you see what I mean. I mean, if you start talking to them, have a conversation with them, you're opening yourself up to a familiar spirit, okay? Because, like I said, not to repeat myself, but I don't know who this is for. I just being obedient. But all the times when you're down in life, when you're down after you lost your best friend or, or if your spouse passed away, your family member passed away, you hold dear to your heart. All the times at your lowest deepest moments that's when the enemy is going to try to deceive you most of the time that's when it happens because if you don't watch it that's when the devil will come against you is when you are at your lowest you saw me so that's why i say if you're if you're not spiritually strong and have a good sound mind you can fall easily for the enemy's devices okay so I mean, see, most of the time, like I said, most of those uh, tarot card readers and most of those uh, people that are playing with the Ouija boards and most of those people that are, you know, doing the psychic reading, tarot card readers, readers, they they they're just playing guessing games, okay? They're just playing guessing games. Now, honestly. Do you think that the uh, card readers will tell you something negative about your loved one that's passed on? Nope. Why? They don't want to tell you something that's going to hurt your feelings. That's why. So I mean, so that most people will go to a sack reader or a card reader, or sometimes they go to a Ouija board and say, "Hey, uh, what does? What, am I meant to be single or am I meant to be married?" See, those people can answer it. I mean, it's about like uh, on Halloween night, you know, some people will, uh, you know, used to have that saying, I don't know if it's still around or not. You take a, you take an apple peel, you, put, you peel an apple peel off of an apple, right? You toss the apple around your right shoulder, you spin around three times, and you will look in the mirror and you say who your future wife is. That's superstitious. You might want to get away from that. You get where I come from. <laughs> That's superstition right there. But I was like, I say, if somebody's never heard that say, well, you just heard it now. <laughs> I mean, for real. I mean, there's some people that believe in that. Some people believe you, you know, pull an apple, peeling off of a off of an apple, off of a apple, I should say. You spin around in circles three times and look in the mirror on now, way not. You'll see what your future life, life looks like. <laughs> God, I had this whole mirror, mirror on the wall theme, right? You might want to uh, look out, okay? Because that's not good, okay? I mean, that's not a good spirit to play around with. You get where I come from. Now, as I close, I mean, I enjoy doing these videos. But I was like I say, it's straight from the heart. And I want to reach out to somebody and be helpful to the body of Christ as much as I can, okay? Now, let me just say this. People need to stop saying the word luck and wish, okay? I mean, most of us, yes, we say oftentimes, wish me luck. Good luck. You're wishing for this. When you think about wish, what do you think about? Versus praying to God for something, if it's in God's will. Say it's like Gilbert. Thank you, Lord, for bringing him over here, too. Okay, here's a big one that everybody already know about, okay? Every Thanksgiving, right, the last bone on the turkey, right, they call that a wishbone, right? They say, make a wish and pull the bone and break it. Don't tell what your wish is because your wish will come true. Hmm. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't be saying that, but my thing is you need to do some study behind it, okay? Because it's not what we know that hurt us. It's what we don't know that hurt us, okay? 
Because what you think may be harmless right now can be harmless in the spirit world if you get where it comes from. See, like some people say, I wish upon a star. You know, I wish of this, I wish of that. I wish I had this, I wish I had that. Wish, 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 wish. You know, like an old Sears uh, wish book that used to be around years ago. You know, you just look at things, you just, hey, I wish I had that, wish I had that, wish, 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 wish. So I'm saying, are you really getting anywhere or are you just staying stuck on a wish list? You see what I mean? Because most people get stuck on a wish list. But when you start praying to God, if it's a God's will for something to take place in your life, then it'll come to pass if it's in God's will, okay? I mean, like I say, some people, they don't think about, okay, I'm not lucky. You see what I mean? Or I don't feel lucky, you know what I'm saying? Or I don't feel like my wish has came true. People need to be careful with some of the stuff they get into, okay? You see what I mean? People need to be careful with that. I mean, I'm not saying you should or you shouldn't say, you know, I wish. But I'm just saying, do your own discernment. Do your own study. Don't just take this guy's word for it. Do your own some research. You know what I'm saying? Do your own research. That's where some people go wrong on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. They just, you know, click on the video, they, they read a post, but they don't examine behind what that person's saying, though, okay? So, I mean, see, I, I mean, that word saying I wish could mean absolutely nothing. Or that luck could be absolutely nothing. But, when it comes to the word of God, you can't afford to be wrong, okay? See what I'm saying? Because... When, if it's a God's will, things will come to pass, okay? I mean, there's no such thing as saying luck, okay? You can be blessed, you see what I mean? Because when you get out of these so-called sayings and slangs and lingos different people gave us over the years and start studying and researching what that stuff really means, it's the more understanding you'll get of things, okay? You see what I mean? I mean, I'm not saying you shouldn't say I wish. I'm not saying you shouldn't say luck. But if you want to say wish, well, wish yourself on. If you want to say luck, well, luck yourself on. But me, I pray and if it's in God's will for things that come across, you know, come to pass. I, and I'm blessed. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't need some lucky charm telling me, hey, rather or not, I'm, you know, lucky or something like that. But I was, now, I know I'm blessed. You know what I'm saying? When you wake up every day, you see things that are small, and you're just thankful to have what you have. The sinners I mean with low vision. I mean, I have mines are like a video camera that's not zoomed in on one particular item, but I praise God I'm able to do what I could do with low vision. You get where I come from. So that's why I say, I mean, I can see myself in this uh, phone right here, and I praise God for it. I give God all the honor and praise for that. That's all I can say. But, see, when you think about blessings versus wishing and, and lucky, come on now. I mean, when you start studying the differences, you start asking questions, you start examining things, it's the more awakening you, you become in the spirit world, okay? You saw me. Because like I was like to say, if it wasn't for asking questions about that Ouija board, if it wasn't for asking questions about that tarot card readers and the psychics, I mean, people would know that they are of the devil. You get where I come from? They wouldn't know that. But as I gotta say, if somebody walks up to me right now, tell me, hey, you're gonna get a wife today, or hey, you all make some friends today, or hey, your channel's gonna blow up today. You know, you'll get more subscribers today. I'm gonna run. Why am I gonna run? <laughs> because I because I get out of here. I'm not gonna see whether or not you're of God or not. <laughs> As I said, I mean, I've, I, I I I test and discern things before I even just go along with, and and to be careful with this. God told me to tell you something, situation, deals, okay? 
because a God ain't said nothing to you, you might want to be careful. Because you could be using God's name in vain when you're saying something that God did not say. You got you to gotta understand that because God's name is to be held holy above everybody else, okay? Because when God says something, it's going to come to pass. It's not going to leave you with, hope so, maybe so, I thought so, I thought so. It's going to be a simple yes or no answer or right, not right now answer, okay? Because God's answer to us, as I close, is either a yes answer or either a no answer or not right now answer, okay? You get where I come from. I mean, you got to understand that. Because when you rightfully divide things and you rightfully get down to the nitty gritty and you rightfully get down to where rubber meets the road, it's the more understanding you will get. You see what I mean? It's the more understanding you will get. You see what I mean? Because what days come to pass that God shows somebody, that's a blessing. If something don't come to pass, well, you know it didn't come for God. So, I mean, because God ain't going to tell you something and it's going back on his word now. Either. So, I mean, when God tells you something, it's going to be for real. But most people sometimes when they walk around saying, God told me this or God told me that, most of the time, they are listening to their feelings and emotions. So, I mean, they are listening to their wants. They're not hearing what God is really saying. So, I mean. It's better when God's plan aligns up with your plan, okay? When your plan aligns up with God's plan and your and God's will lines up with God's will, okay? I said all that to say this. When you have God 100% in your life, you know without a shadow of a doubt, you're a child of God. Your sins have been washed through the blood of Jesus. You don't need that psychic over there telling you about your future. You don't need that uh, tarot card reader over there telling you about your future. You don't need that Ouija board we reader telling you about your future. Nah. It's you and God, okay? So, I mean, say if it's a God's will, things are going to pass. If not, I may just keep serving God anyway. And so, I mean, because like I say, most people they search for answers in all the right uh, excuse me in all the wrong places, but they don't never, you know, humble themselves to get on their knees and ask God, Hey, what do you want to show me, Lord? What do you want to reveal to me? What do you want to tell me? You saw I me? Mean? Because most of the time, oftentimes the best answers you're looking for is found in the Word of God, okay? That dusty Bible that's on your shelf. That's collecting dust has all the answers you're looking for, but you got to be obedient to God and open up the Word of God and read, study, rightfully divide the Word of God so you can receive the Spirit of Truth. Because without that Word of God, you're not going to be able to feed your spirit man, spirit woman. So, I mean, because most people that think that, I want to go to church once a week and I'll be full. Now, your, your relationship with God is every day, okay? You got to have the Word of God every day. Now, let me just say this as I close for real. I mean, when, when the Lord takes me to a different spot, I go along with it, okay? Praise and worship music is fine. Nothing wrong with that. It's a wonderful thing when it's done the right way, okay? However, our lifestyle reality is our true praise of worship, okay? When you go to school, when you go to college, you go to work, or anywhere you go in general in person, and people can see that glow about you, and they can see something any day will want to have, that is a part of praise and worship. When you treat others the way God wants you to treat others and the way you'll want to be treated, that's a part of praise and worship. You get where I come from. That's what most people don't realize. We worship God with our lifestyle, not just singing a few songs. You see what I mean? Not not because singing songs are a wonderful thing, but you got to understand. If uh, praise and worship was its only limit to a soundtrack, well, then praise and worship would be a piece of cake, wouldn't it? You get where I come from. Because 
It's our lifestyle reality. It's who we are. Anybody can say they're they're church Christian Sunday morning, but what is their lifestyle six days a week? You get where I come from. What is their lifestyle six days a week? That's all I mean. See, anybody can put on a good show behind a YouTube camera. Anybody can put on a good show behind a TikTok camera, Facebook camera, or an Instagram camera. But what does God see behind the door? That's all I mean. What does God see? Because you can fool anybody in person. You can fool anybody online, but what does God see, okay? Because our true praise of worship is our everyday lifestyle. It's not just limited to a soundtrack, okay? It's how we present ourselves. It's how we treat others. It's how we do unto others as we have done to us. You got where I come from. It's about being a lighthouse to those that's in the dark. It's about leading those, those uh, lost ones, those uh, prodigal sons and daughters back to the back to the word of God, back to God. It's all me. That's what that's about. It's all me. See, that's what the you know true praise of worship is about reaching out to people, helping somebody. Because like I said, you can be a turnaround in somebody's life when you're obedient to the Lord. So I mean because they could be off into something they shouldn't be off into. The Zacchaeus like Christian could be off into Play on Ouija boards, or they could be off into talking to a psychic, or they could also be off into uh, watching tarot card readers on uh, TikTok. But, I was, but you could be a turnaround and say, hey, look, you need to get away from those things because those things ain't good, because those things are demonic. And <clears throat> I mean, you really open yourself up for familiar spirits, okay? It's not about taking a rod and bamming people upside the head, smacking them upside the head, saying they're going to hell and all this other stuff. It's not about that. That's way too much judgmental stuff going on. But my thing is, when you tell that person, hey, look, God don't want you watching that, watching the tarot card readers, and God don't want you uh, dealing with this uh, sidekick, and God don't want you playing with the Ouija board. Because that stuff will lead you to the wrong path, okay? That stuff will lead some people into hell if they're not careful. Because they're playing with the demonic entities. So, I mean, see, like I said, anything the enemy can use to bound somebody up, he's going to do it. Anything the devil can use to get you lost and confused, Satan's going to do it. Because Satan is author of of uh, confusion. He's an author of confusion. You got to understand that if you get where I come from because like I can say, I mean, Satan came to kill, steal, and destroy. You see what I mean? Because like I can say, when you get a true one-on-one -on -one relationship with the Lord, that is when things are revealed to you and that is when things, you know, become clear to you. So I'll say, so I hope and pray that this uh, video is uh, helpful to somebody. And if anybody has any questions or feedback or anything, so feel free to leave that in the comment section. And I'll see you guys back in my next video. Y'all have a wonderful, blessed day. God bless each and every one of y'all.